Hey everyone, uh, welcome to another episode of In Conversation. I'm Jose Medrano, and today I'm here with Medi Bellucci. Medi, how's it going? Good, how are you? Good, good. Um, if you're watching the video, you'll notice we have masks on, you know, following all the protocols. So we are here in the bubble in Orlando. Um, can you tell us how, how the bubble's been going? Um, life life in, in the bubble has been an adjustment. I think uh, the, we didn't know what it's going to look like coming in. And I think now that we're here and we spent, you know, we're at four weeks now, um, you almost kind of get used to it. Um, ultimately, it's, you know, we're lucky to, to, to be working around the game and, and, and not having to deal with, with the consequences of, of, of the virus. What is uh, the routine like for people outside have kind of have no idea? What is it like a normal day? The schedule for the um, for the coaches is usually uh, we do two meetings a day. So the morning one is um, is about where things are with the team and if there, there are any conversations that we need to be having and the the kind of bigger picture. And then the afternoon is usually about um, the plan for training and what we need to be looking to do um, going into training and obviously training. And we usually um, get back and kind of get together and, and, and assess that as well afterwards. So busy days, full days, really, right? Pretty much, yeah. Um, and this is, you know, a new role for you. Um, for those that may not know, Mehdi was a, had a career in MLS as a player. Did you always think you wanted to be a coach? Did you always know? I was always really curious about the game, like tactically. I was really into it, even when I played, in terms of like, you know, looking at teams and how they play and how they press and how they build and, and kind of just a lot of detail on like how different teams are, are playing. And I watched a lot of the game um, growing up. Um, so at the end of my career, the last few years, I did know that I wanted to be a coach. And I, I dove in a little bit more and tried to learn as much as possible from the coaches that I had and and try to take as much knowledge from them and, and take that into 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 my my own career. So talk about that transition at the end. How was it? Was it a little bit shocking? Or were you ready? How, how did it go from your time in New York to, to the academy? Um, the the last few years of my playing career were, were, you know, a little bit of a bonus because of because of the injuries I've had. You know, I've had two ACLs and coming back from that, you don't know how long you're going to be able to handle, you know, everyday training and games and all. So. You know, I want. I didn't want to retire on on an injury. I wanted to come back and play, and it ended up being, you know, two two plus years, and and I was lucky to have that. I think I think if you look now, there are, there are barely any, you know, players with two ACLs playing. You know, and, and I was fortunate to to have to be back and work really hard to come back and 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 play, um, and spend the time also to to kind of get my my coaching career ready as well. I imagine learning a lot from Patrick Vieira and Dome in those, yeah. those days or, or yeah, yeah. what did you so, take away? So I've had um I've had plenty of coaches that I that I that I learned from you know in the league. Um I think there there are a lot of really good ones that, you know, I try to pick up the good and bad from all of them, you know, and, and trying to see what worked for them and, and what didn't work and, and see what I can kinda of take on. Are there maybe one or two that really had an impact on you? Um, yeah, in different ways. I think there are, there are some guys that are really good about, um, you know, player management. There are some, some other coaches that are really good tactically, uh, and, and you kind of just trying to take, take the, the best out of all of them. But I've, I've had, you know, I've had obviously Patrick who's really good tactically. Um, I've had, you know, Jason who is really good work ethic is really more of a player coach and 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 drove the whole group you know and he did well with that frank yallop was the same um i had a lot of different coaches that that i could take a lot out of what are some of your favorite memories from your playing days at nycfc i think the first big one is 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 coming back to new york um my family my wife is from here um we were in, we were actually on vacation when i when i got the call to 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 that, that I've gotten picked up in the expansion. If if I was interested to to come back to New York and I, and I, I was really happy to get that. I think coming back here was really good for me personally and and being around a, a new, um, a new franchise with with new ideas and a new market was was uh, was really exciting, uh, both professionally and and obviously personally. And where, tell us where it kind of all started. Where were you born? Where'd you grow up? And and your first memories with soccer. Yeah, so I grew up in Morocco. 
um, small town about half hour from Casablanca. Um, grew up playing the game, you know, in the streets, the beaches. Um, joined a you know professional academy at the age of 12, 13. And then at 17, I was good enough to to make a jump, whether that would be in an academy in Europe or try to get a scholarship in the States. I ended up coming here because my brother was already living in the States. I went to, um, ended up getting recruited by um, Creighton University, went there for a semester, got really homesick, um, transferred to Santa Clara University where I had already been living in California then. Um, yeah, I went there for three years. Did really well in college. I did well enough in college to to be able to to get drafted um, in the first round, and and then went on to play different teams in the league and for ten plus years. And you you mentioned playing in the beaches and the streets. You're a very technical player. Can you describe that a little more? And if that kind of gave you a different technique or something? Yeah, I think that that street game now is is dying a little bit i think um around the world i think even if you look at you know different places where they used to have it you know it used to be you know bigger impact on communities i think there's less less of it now as we go so the game has gotten more and more organized um which is good and bad um i think for me growing up it was just the faster way to get a game on, you know, and I think it's just friends and, you know, like neighbors and it was just small sided games and playing mini tournaments. And like, I think, I think we just wanted to play and we played as often as possible. I think that's what we didn't think about, you know, being professional or anything. It was just fun for us. That was our toy. That was just the way we were just enjoying life. So what was the day? Like, were you literally playing all day or five aside or something like that? What was it like? No, so we'll have school. So school is, you know, pretty much all day. And then, and then by the time, so when I was younger, by the time I'd get back, you know, five, six o'clock was now, you know, small sided until, until late nights. So, I was, you know, talking 10, 11 o'clock, which sound, sounds crazy in today's <laughs> world. But yeah, that was like regular. Then as I, you know, got a little older, uh, our training was midday. So I'd go to school in the morning, go to training, like in the middle of the day, like 12, 1 o'clock. And then go back to school, um, and then when I'm done, you know, when I was done with school, then again pick up games. So I'll go like academy training in the middle of the day, and then after after school, go back and try to find a pick up game somewhere. So even when you were getting the more structured academy, you still yeah. were getting the street, yeah street game. Yeah, that that's yeah. We just we just played as I think that that just wasn't enough. So it was, <laughs> <laughs> we just like it was uh, it was nonstop, you know, playing, which you know. Looking back now, like it helped me a lot because um, one, I still have those friends that I used to play around with, and then two, um, one of my strength was my touch, and and you know it is because we played on all kinds of different surfaces, and and it, you know I think over time that it can only help. You're a coach now. Uh, looking back at all your career, your stages. Do you see your 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 time your memories of soccer and, and experiences differently now? So do you sort of wish, hey, I would I wish I would have told myself that I would tell my younger self that anything like that? Yeah, for sure. I think I think um, even as a player, I think you grow a little bit, and then you look at your rookie year, and you're like, oh, I should have done that. You probably could have done more of this, less of that. And as you grow in life in general, you can always look back and say, I could have done this or that. I think. I think the beauty of life is you don't have the time to think about that. I think now that, of course, now that I look at it from this side, is it's easier to go back and say, oh, yeah, you know, but reality is you just never have those opportunities. Obviously, the coaching staff is new. Uh, Ronnie Dyla joining us this season as a head coach. What's the dynamic like in, in the coaching staff? Very diverse coaching staff. Yeah, I think we probably have the most diverse coaching staff in the league. It's been really good um, for me being part of it. I think I've... I've, you know, I've been learning um, a lot from everyone uh, on a daily basis. I think I come into work, and I think every meeting, every every day, I pick something up, and and I, you know, I'm I'm an, I'm always I feel like I'm always um, learning, which is a, which is an awesome environment to come into. Um, Ronnie's been really open and really um, inclusive in the way he works. Uh, he doesn't really believe in hierarchy, which is awesome for our staff because we. We uh, we can say how we feel. We can have opinions about different things, and 
we can discuss and agree and disagree about many different things on on a daily basis which which is a great again environment to be around and and, and learning also learning environment for for everyone and you have the perspective you've been a player now you're a coach how does your perspective change in those two like did it change your your perspective yeah yeah i think um i think when you're as a player you 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 want to you think a little bit more about how you can get yourself ready like how you to prepare for training the things that you have to do to get yourself to be the best player in training or in a game or you know whatever it may be and i think as a coach um we think for the group how do we get the best out of the team um how do we get the right combinations in different you know areas of the field to to get the best out of everyone um i think that's ultimately what our job is all about and at the same time trying to improve everyone trying to get the best out of everyone and also drive the culture so there's a lot of different uh layers to coaching <laughs> um that we try to think about on a daily basis is how to drive the team one how to get the best out of everyone how to improve everyone and also how do we, more importantly um is how do we uh instill the culture that we want uh within not only the team but the club do you think it's maybe a little bit more of a 24/7 job and that like you're always thinking about it uh, not to say players aren't always focused but is coaching is it more like you're always always trying to think yeah that's a great point um yeah i think as a player because you only think about what you know you are controlling yourself um and that's easy to manage one person versus us thinking about how we could manage you know 24 plus people your person you know from my perspective that i think really embodies the culture and what this club is you, you played for us you were part of the academy and now you're on the co- on the first team coaching staff you know it, from the inside what 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 do you kind of try to embody in this club and and hope you see in, in the culture always what do you go to work every day trying to make happen i think for one i think this club has been really good about helping people improve i think i think you can look at I can look at many many examples and um within the club in different in different departments but if I'm to talk about myself I mean I think going from playing um to to joining the academy I've I've had a lot of people help me through it you know like you know and what it, what is what it takes and and how to adjust and how to make the best of it so I can be the best version of myself every day when I'm doing my job um and not not only that I think it also rewards people for for wanting to improve and and working hard at, at at their job i think that's that's another really cool thing about the club um that i really um have a lot of um respect for you know football clearly has given you a lot in life um and you're using it now to to give back as well can you tell us a little bit about the foundation you started and, and the work you do yeah so I started a foundation um kickstart joy uh that would, was the last year of uh of me playing at at New York City FC there was a lot going on in um in Syria um uh, at the time there was a lot of refugees fleeing uh, the war and 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 you know washing off the shores of Europe and Africa and all over the place and I I at the time decided to I wanted to volunteer and, and wanted to get involved and do something um just to just to try to help and I think as the idea as I talked to more more and more people I think I decided to to stick to what i know best that you know the, the one thing that comes easy to me is is the game and try to bring that over and and see how i can bring some joy to these kids um looking at these camps um in in the borders of of um jordan you know half of them were kids you know and i think the game the game of soccer was is the most um popular sport in syria so the, all these kids loved the game they knew all these superstars or you know all these teams around they watched champions league la liga the epl so it was really surprising like traveling and and seeing their perspective on what's going on and and also just being able to bring you know a normal soccer camp that we'd have here in the states that you know would send our kids to so what what did the work look like are you teaching them more soccer are you with the I know there was some interesting stories with the girls playing soccer there too right yeah so we it's it's a 
it's a boys and girls um, camp. Um, we do the boys in the morning and then the girls in the afternoon. And then because of the school schedule, so the girls go to school in the morning and the boys go to school in the afternoon. Um, but it's not as much, you know, teaching the game. It's more just providing the platform for them to to have fun and forget about what, where they are or what's going on in their lives. I think that was that was the biggest um the bigger you know objective you know going from here and, and getting all these different organizations and different sponsors to to want to be involved even players right there's many players that that still to this day you know ask and call and want to be involved and travel there and, and 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 volunteer so that was the main thing is just to be able to provide um like a, you know you know, a platform for them to come and, and play and, and, and forget their situation for a little bit. Surely some people are going to want to help or support. Is, is it still ongoing? How can they help? Yeah, so we usually do one um, big trip a year and we take it to different refugee camps. The idea is, is to hopefully keep keep it moving and, and try to like tap into different places. This year is, is tough because everything's so uncertain and, and um, uh, it doesn't look like we'll be able to run one this season. Um, but as it gets closer, um, you know, to the next trip, uh, I'll make sure to uh, to hit you up so you can <laughs> so you can get us some help if, yeah. if if possible. For sure, amazing. Jump in a little bit to now where we are at this moment. Uh, we had a tough start to the tournament, um, but you know we've turned it around quite a bit. Uh, from your perspective, just how, how have you seen us progressing in the, in this tournament? The group stage is always going to be tough because we haven't had games in a long time so you don't know what you're gonna get from not only your team but different teams so you're only going into these games yeah of course you want to do your best but um ultimately teams that do well in in tournaments like this in world cups don't start that well um we have been lucky in a way to move on from the group stage i've always said that if we beat if we get out of this group stage and obviously we beat Toronto, that we will win the tournament. So heading into Saturday, at the time of recording this, we, we still don't know our opponent, either mm. Portland or Cincinnati. How is the team feeling heading into that? The team is feeling really good. I think there's been some really um, major steps that we've taken as a group. Um, I think, of course, it takes a little bit of an adjustment from different way of working, you know, um, different ideas, different culture, and all these things that we, when 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 there's a new coaching staff and we're trying to implement it, it could take a little bit of time. And I think, I think we're making big strides and and things are clicking for us a little bit now. Um, we've been really unlucky in, in some games where we've created many more chances than the opponent, and you know, uh, the game could be cruel sometimes. I think, um, I think the way to look at it for for a coaching staff and we try to stay as calm as possible with it is it, is if we are creating creating more chances than you know significantly significantly more chances than the opposition then then we are doing the, the, we are heading in the right way perfect great best of luck on saturday Matty. thank Thanks you so much for, for joining us thank you for having me